So in this section, we're going to talk about the two types of cells that exist. So we've got prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Um, prokaryotes are going to be the simplest living organisms, and they're going to have no organelles. So nothing really floating around inside except for DNA and some ribosomes. <clears throat> so prokaryotes are going to be bacteria, and there's two types. There's archaea bacteria and regular bacteria. Archaea bacteria are going to be um, what they call extremophiles, and they live in very extreme environments. Hot springs, they live in ice, they live in areas where there's no oxygen, those types of things. Okay, so although bacteria are small, you're probably hearing more and more in the news that they are really important for us because they can do a whole bunch of stuff for us. So here's a couple of things that they're really important for. One is that they harvest light energy. So they're really important with the food chain because there's a lot of photosynthetic bacteria that are producing oxygen through photosynthetic activity. So that's super important for getting carbon out of the atmosphere and making oxygen and all of that. Um, another one is they break down dead organisms and recycle their components. So when you find a rotting carcass or something like that, that's actually bacteria doing its job and breaking those parts down so that they can be recycled into that system. And then a third one that people um, kind of feel iffy about is that they cause disease. And causing disease is a natural process. I mean, it is population control, so we could think of it that way. Um, and so they're really important for that. <clears throat> And then the fourth one is a newer one, and they're used in industrial technology and biomedical technology. There are so many cool things that they're doing with bacteria. They can use them to clean up oil spills. They've found some where if they feed them the right diet, they can actually get them to create biodegradable plastic. So lots and lots of research going into that. Okay, so as far as the way that they're going to be set up, they're going to have a cell wall, and that's different from our cells. Our cells don't have that. Um, plant cells do, but it's a different setup. So the cell wall is going to protect the cell, keep its shape, and try to keep the cell from exploding if it took on too much water or something like that. And if we look here, there are going to be two ways that they can be set up. So um, here you can see that on the left we have what's called gram-positive bacteria, and on the right we have what's called gram-negative bacteria. Now, gram-positive bacteria, this little white piece that you see here, that's the cell wall. And you can see the cell wall is very thick on a gram-positive bacteria. And if you get over here to gram-negative, it's a lot thinner, but there's a lot more complexity to this, right? You can see that there's an inner membrane and an outer membrane. There's stuff hanging off of this one. And so um, gram-negative bacteria, which is this one here, tends to be a little bit harder to kill with um, antibiotics and those types of things. Now, the reason we call them gram-positive and gram-negative is because you can expose bacteria to a staining process that's called gram-staining. And what happens is um, there's something you use called crystal violet in the process, and obviously that's purple. And what happens is in gram-positive bacteria, since it's so simple, that cell wall just absorbs all of that dye and it stays purple. And gram-negative bacteria, some of the dye might get in, but in the rinsing process, it all gets pretty much rinsed back off. And you can see the lighter colors here, it's kind of pink. And so gram-negative looks um, kind of red or pinkish under the microscope. Um, so the reason you distinguish these two is that they're going to be treated differently with antibiotics. Gram-positive bacteria, you can usually use a wide array of um, antibiotics to kill them off. And gram-negative bacteria tends to be a little harder to kill. Um, so that's kind of the difference between the two. All right. So that's going to be the cell wall. Another thing that they're going to have, that they can have, is a flagellum. And a flagellum is going to be like a little tail that they're going to use to get from place to place. So here in this picture, you can see that this one actually has three flagella, right? And so um, the way that they actually move is going to be a little different from um, prokaryotes and eukaryotes, but we'll get into that later. All right, um, another one is going to be the plasma membrane. Now, um, in prokaryotes, if you look at this picture, there's really not much inside. And so what that means is that cell membrane is going to have to do a lot of work in order to make the cell function. So the cell membrane in a prokaryote tends to have a little bit more functional abilities. And then the last thing is um, that I have right here is I've just kind of put all of this stuff together that are like really important things about prokaryotes. So prokaryotes are going to have that plasma membrane that's going to do those extra functions. It does not have any organelles, that's a big thing. It has ribosomes, 
It has a nucleoid region, which is going to be where the DNA is floating around in the cell. And its DNA is going to look different from ours because it's going to be circular. So it's actually a circle, whereas our DNA is going to be linear and it's going to be like long threads. Okay, so those are prokaryotes. Now, um, in this next part, we're going to get into eukaryotes. And um, I'm going to split this one up because there's a lot of organelles that you're going to be learning about. Um, so that will be on the next one.